Okay, let's look at this problem here. First, let's look at what we know. We have a um, father who's capital M, small m, and a mother who's capital M, capital M. We know from work we did in class that this means there's a 50-50 chance that individual one will be capital M, capital M, or at a 50% chance that they'll be capital M, small m. But we now know something else, which is that Individual one has a daughter who is capital M, small m. So what does that tell us? That tells us that individual one must be capital M, small m. If she were capital M, capital M, then her daughter would have gotten a capital M allele from her and she couldn't possibly be capital M, small m. So we've learned something um, from the fact that she has a daughter with a small m. We know it must have come from her since... The father is capital M, capital M. So individual one is capital M, small m. And we know um, from what we did in class that uh, that individual two will now have a 50-50 chance of being capital M, capital M, or capital M, small m. So the answer to the problem, what is the probability that individual two is capital M, capital M is one half. Okay. Now, problem two is very similar, except in this case, the daughter is not capital M, small m, she's capital M, capital M. So what have we learned here? What we've learned um, is, is nothing um, exact. So we know that, that um, individual one could be either capital M, capital M, or capital M, small m, because in either case, this kid could have gotten um, the capital M allele from her. But is, have we learned anything? And I'm going to show you that actually we have learned something. So um, let's, let's do this problem by thinking about the different, um, different possibilities of, uh, of a person, of individual one, genotype and um, her daughter. So um, we know that 50% of the time, individual one is going to be capital M, capital M. And if she's capital M, capital M, then her daughter is going to be capital M, capital M always. But if individual one is capital M, small m, then 50% of the time, her daughter's going to be capital M, capital M, and 50% of the time, her daughter's going to be capital M, small m. This is exactly the problem we just worked out uh, before. So, um, if, so let's look at the, the, the different scenarios here. So this, this possibility here, which I'm going to circle... So th this possibility here, which I'm going to call possibility one, that the mother is capital M, capital M, and um, produces a daughter with capital M, capital M, is half of the total probability. And we can, um, we can write the, the, there's the other probabilities here of one quarter, one quarter, which we did before. Now, let's look at the different ways that, that, um, you can get to be capital M, capital M, which is what the, the, the first daughter is. So you can either have be become capital M, capital M, because um, your mother is capital M, capital M, or you can become capital M, capital M, because your mother is capital M, small M, and you, uh, you know, the, the random um, segregation of her alleles sent the capital M allele to her daughter. So... Um, what do we? What have we learned by the fact that this daughter is capital M, capital M? What we've learned is that there's no chance that that this possibility, which I'm erasing over here, could not have happened. Okay. So it seems at, at first like we haven't learned anything, since it's possible both that the the individual one is capital M, capital M, or capital M, small M, and um, but I'm going to show you that we we've, we've actually learned something, which is that. Given that we've observed that, that this individual here, 
this, sorry, let me draw that, that that individual there is capital M, capital M. Um, that is going to, it's twice as likely that given that this individual is capital M, capital M, that the, um, that her mother is capital M, capital M, than that it is that she's capital M, small m. Okay, so uh, in fact, we, ha we have learned something. And what we've learned is that um, it's no longer true that the probability of individual one being capital M, capital M, and capital M, small m are equal. That actually, the probabilities are two-thirds capital M, capital M, and one-third capital M, small m. And the... the um, a nice way of thinking about this is if you don't think that you've learned anything about individual one, think about the following tree I'm going to draw over here, which is that it's it's the same family. Oops, sorry. Drew that one wrong. But instead of having one kid who was capital M, capital M, they have a whole bunch of kids. Sorry, my drawing here is not perfect. But let's just say that they have um, eight kids who are all capital M, capital M. And now we want to know whether it's, it's more, um, you know, whether, whether we've learned anything about individual one. I think you can probably see that in this scenario, where, where technically it's possible still that individual one is capital M, small m, and just eight different coin tosses went, went the, the, a particular, the same way, and, and she transmitted capital M, the capital M allele. But I think as you see more and more uh, you know, of, of the kids are capital M, cap, are capital M, capital M, it becomes less and less likely that individual one is capital M, small m, and in turn it becomes more likely that she's capital M, capital M. Um, and that's exactly what's happening over in the, the, um, in, in the problem itself. That the fact that she had one daughter who is capital M, capital M, is sufficient for us to, to it, it tells us something. It doesn't tell us something definitive like we had in problem one, but it tells us something, and it tells us that, in this case, the um, individual one has a, a about twice as li is twice as likely to be capital M capital M as she is to be capital M small m, and once we have that, then it's easy to calculate the probability that individual two is capital M capital M. It's basically what we did before, except we're changing the numbers. So, um, individual one, two thirds of the time is capital M capital M, and if if she's capital M capital M her daughter is always going to be capital M, capital M. One third of the time, she's capital M, small m. And then half the time, if that's true, she's going to have a capital M, capital M daughter. And half the time, a capital M, small m daughter. So we put those together. And we see that here it's one times two thirds is two thirds. One third times one half is one sixth, and one third times one half is one sixth. So these are the two possibilities that'll give us capital M, capital M. It's two thirds plus one sixth, and that, um, if you add those together, is five sixth capital M, capital M. So if you compare what we just saw here in problem two to what we saw in problem one, in problem one, the answer is one half capital M capital M. Okay, so so um, if the first kid is capital M small m, then there's a 50-50 chance that the second kid is going to be capital M capital M. But if the first kid is capital M capital M, that probability um, shoots all the way up to five sixth from one half. So um, and I think this is a perhaps slightly confusing problem. So so I'll I'll return to it later, but. Um, and the, the important thing to learn here is that 
uh, even when even when you're not getting conclusive information, like in problem one, we got conclusive information that individual one had to be capital M, small m. Just because you don't get conclusive information doesn't mean you're not getting any information at all. And so um, this happens a lot in genetics that we get uh, information that can help us learn something about, about another individual, but it doesn't always tell us something definitive. And we have to learn how to um, uh, update what we know about one individual from observations we make about another. Okay, let's go on to practice problem three. So this is a little bit more of a classic genetics problem since rather than just having one individual with, um, this, in this case, the small b allele, we have multiple individuals. Over here on the left, we have a father who's capital B, capital B, and a mother who's small b, small b. And on the right, we have a father who's capital B, small b, and a um, uh, mother who's capital B, small b as well. So um, the, the problem is just to figure out what the um, um, probabilities are for individual five. So let's work through it. Um, let's start with this, the individual, let's give these, um, oops, that's probably not the best way to number them. I'm going to just, so we all are on the same page, I'm going to call them parent one, parent two parent three and parent four. So parent one is always going to contribute a capital B allele to their child. So individual two will get a capital B allele in the, um, from their father and a small B allele from their mother. So there's a 100% chance that they're going to be capital B, small b. And in this problem, we don't care about individual one and individual four since they're not affecting the probabilities of individual two and three. Since we don't know anything about them, they're, they're independent of two and three, and we can just ignore them. Um, individual three is a little more complicated. There's a 50-50 chance that they'll get a capital B or small b from each parent, right? So their possible genotypes are, you know, one out of every four times they'll get capital B, capital B. That is a B from each parent. One out of every four times they'll get a small b, small b and one half they'll get a capital B, small b. So, you know, these if they're heterozygous, sometimes that's because they got capital B from their father and small b from their mother, and sometimes it's because they got capital B from their mother and small b from their father, but from their genotype is still capital B, small b, so we don't care. Now we go to individual five, and um, we just have to multiply these numbers out. There's a one-half chance they get capital B from their mother, one-half chance they get small b from their mother. Um, here it looks a little complicated, but but I think if you look at the if you look at the alleles they might get from their parent, I think you can see that it's still 50-50 that they're going to, to get a capital B allele or a small b allele. And um, The, the, um, so we can write out those probabilities as one half capital B and one half small b. And now if we multiply those all together, it's just like the problem we had for parent three and parent four. So the probabilities of individual five are one quarter capital B, capital B, one half capital B, small b, and one quarter small b, small b. And that 